Indeed, Michael Jackson's demise in his Los Angeles home was linked to an overdose of propofol, a potent anesthetic typically reserved for surgical settings. Moreover, Michael's personal physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in connection to MG's untimely end, even serving two years behind bars. However, the story is far from straightforward. Jonna, I assert my innocence. I plead not guilty. All right, Murray, if you claim innocence, could it be that you were merely a scapegoat? From the public's perspective, the puzzle pieces are yet to align. Who is truly behind MJ's demise? And why does it appear he was targeted for demise over a prolonged period? Michael's kin continue their quest for clarity and the truth behind what transpired. I apologize, Robin. It's just that. I realize I repeat myself. It's challenging, unbelievably so. And to this day, it remains a tough pill to swallow. Janet Jackson, among others, suspects that foul play was involved in her brother's death, a sentiment echoed by her sister, Latoya, who voiced that something sinister lurked beneath. Comrade Murray was nothing but a pawn. What transpired was coldly calculated, a deliberate act. They plotted to eliminate my brother, and he sensed it coming. He warned me over and over and over that his end was near. Latoya shared that Michael's paranoia stemmed from fears concerning his music catalogs. He confided, it's about my catalog, my life's work in publishing. They covet, they desire control, and they aim to strip it from me. Thus, Michael harbored a complex relationship with his catalog, fraught with both affection and aversion, a sentiment Latoya reiterated during a CNN interview where she affirmed her belief that Michael's murder was orchestrated. First off, she recounted, Michael had foreseen his murder. The fear in him was palpable. Latoya revealed that on the evening, Michael returned home for the last time. His intuition told him something was gravely wrong. Shortly after his death, those whom he had previously distrusted took charge of his estate. She boldly named Dr. Tomei, a late addition to Michael's circle, who quickly ascended to control his business dealings. Under Dr. Tomei's guidance, key longtime associates of Michael were dismissed, isolating him further. Dr. Tomei then redirected Michael's business interests to benefit his own group, clearly pursuing a hidden agenda. Latoya also confided that Paris, Michael's daughter, harbors deep suspicions about her father's mysterious end. I just, I love him so much. In her book, Starting Over, Latoya details Paris's heart-wrenching account of Michael's last days. Daddy was always cold, always shivering. He'd sit by the fire, falling asleep or crying. We kept a vigilant eye on him, aware that he needed medical attention. Then suddenly, the lights went out. We were plunged into darkness, and our communication cut off. She also recounts a poignant moment from Paris. During a sibling squabble, Dad intervened, saying, Stop fighting. I won't always be here, and you, Paris, will need to step up and look after your brother. In a candid interview with Rolling Stone, Paris herself was asked, if she believed there was a conspiracy surrounding her father's death, her response was unequivocal. Absolutely. It's clear as day. It may sound like a conspiracy theory, something out of a movie, but those who really knew him, the family, we all feel it was orchestrated. When pressed on who might have wished her father harm, she simply said, a lot of people. Paris expressed her determination to uncover the truth, hopeful for justice. I'm committed to seeking justice, though it's like playing a complex chess game. I have to approach this cautiously, she stated. The narrative of conspiracy extends beyond the family, even reaching controversial figures like Kanye West, known for his explosive public declarations. In one rant, he linked MJ's struggles directly to Tommy Matola, hinting at deeper industry machinations. Matola's tenure with Michael, spanning pivotal albums from Dangerous to Invincible, ended acrimoniously. Michael didn't mince words publicly denouncing Matola as manipulative and malevolent. He's devilish, the worst of the industry, Michael declared in London in 2002. They hate that I own half of Sony's publishing. I outsmarted them, and now they want revenge. Theories abound that Michael's influential position, bolstered by owning a vast music catalog including the Beatles, made him a target for powerful entities, including the supposed Illuminati. Allegations that they sabotaged his image and orchestrated his downfall proliferate among his most ardent fans and certain family members. These theories propose that when attempts to discredit him failed, more drastic measures were taken. 
Some even speculate that the charges against him were fabricated to weaken his influence, with Dr. Murray as a possible pawn in this intricate game. Despite the swirling conspiracies and rumors of staged death, some even believe Michael might still be alive, with alleged sightings fueling these speculations. However fantastical these narratives may seem, they persist, fueled by unresolved questions and the enigmatic circumstances surrounding Michael Jackson's demise. What do you think? What's his tragic end a meticulously planned conspiracy? Who might have orchestrated it? Share your thoughts in the comments below.